Yo, what is up my gaming friends and welcome back to the final part of what if Naruto was a senju. In this video, we go up to the events of the Chunin exams finals, but sadly we do not go any further. If you're interested to know why, stick around until the end of the video where it is all explained. If you want to see a future for this series, make sure to stay tuned until then and leave your opinions on what you think of this series so far down in the comments. Once again, I apologize for the ragged audio, but by the time we reboot this series, all of that will be fixed. So without further ado, let's get this started. Nezuko, believe it! Whoever insults my hair will get the full brunt of my fury. Shut up, you idiot! Hey, it's me, Goku! By now, a day or two had passed since the entire Zabuza retrieval arc had finished, and Naruto would actually remember that this is around the time the tuning exams start up. So he would sought out his sensei to ask him about his team. Obviously, it would take him a while to find Kakashi, but as you might have wondered, he would find him at the memorial site as per usual. And when he does go up to Kakashi, both of them would stand there for a while in silence until they would finally speak. Actually, it would be Kakashi to start the conversation this time, obviously giving some sort of condolences towards Yamato and explain that they had actually served on the Anbu together, while Naruto would reciprocate this, saying that he knows Kakashi had obviously not only lost his sensei, the fourth Hokage, but also his two teammates. So, after a while passes after this once again, Kakashi would finally ask what Naruto wants, and Naruto would reciprocate, saying that he is wondering about the upcoming Chunin exams and if Kakashi is going to allow Team 7 to participate. Kakashi would actually be caught off guard as he hadn't thought about it up until this point, with Naruto actually backing his team, thinking they have made some good progress and should be on the level where they can participate. Kakashi would ask Naruto if he's serious since he was able to wipe out the entirety of his tuning exams literally single-handedly, so why would he put his team on that level too? He would obviously first laugh and say of course he doesn't put his team on that level, but he does think they could accomplish everything and even have the potential to get the rank of tuning, where he got it through pure power, Sakura would probably be able to get it through uh, planning and just general smarts, and Sasuke is enough of a prodigy to be able to handle anything this generation has to throw at him, obviously, except he himself. Kakashi would be surprised by Naruto saying all this, but would actually accept Naruto's request and would say he would allow them to enter the tuning exams, but they would be at a disadvantage being only a two-man team. Also, Kakashi doesn't even think two-man teams are currently allowed, with Naruto saying, oh yeah, that entire situation with me happened. With a back and forth between Kakashi and Naruto, when they said, when they would decide that a Team 7 may participate if they can find a third member. But before that, Naruto actually suggests instead of waking, waiting out the week period, Kakashi recalls them not for missions, but instead for training. Sure, five days isn't a lot for training, but they could push in some last minute information that would be really needed. And as you might have thought, this would lead to Kakashi calling on both Sasuke and Sakura to start up training. In this case, we would actually start off for Sasuke, some training he would not have originally had until the one month time skip. Obviously, this would be more chakra enhancement training like in the Land of Waves, but in this time, prep for the Chidori. Meaning a majority of Sasuke's training would actually be with Kakashi, which leaves Naruto to do with Sakura as he pleases. Do not take that out of context. He would actually put her through significant training as he would push her to her physical limit, constantly reminding her that she is physically weaker than probably anyone in her generation and she doesn't really have any ninjutsu to back it. So he would create three wood clones and tell her when she can de uh, if she could defeat them by the end of this period, she's ready to enter the tuning exams, but if she doesn't, he will tell Kakashi to recall her. 
So Sakura, with some new motive, and even Naruto somewhat telling her what to do every now and then, she would make use of everything in her book, be it the transformation jutsu, similar to how Naruto used it in canon during the, uh, I believe, Zabuza arc, where he had created a clone and used it to transform himself into a shuriken. But instead, what she would do is she would use the academy-style clones, which is not but an illusion, and the transformation jutsu to confuse Naruto. Obviously, she could use this to somewhat turn into Naruto to create some sort of false appearance acting like one of the clones, which would cause a confusion, like a confusion which might also lead to them attacking each other. But Naruto having a sensory ability should possibly be able to take care of this pretty easily. So when it comes down to it, Sakura would never actually be able to destroy all three clones, maybe one or two, even awakening her monstrous strength early. And with that, that's basically the training period. She wouldn't actually be able to destroy all three, never actually more than one, but through confusion tactics and all around physical strength improvements, she gains Naruto's approval and would be allowed to join the training exams. But with this coming to a close, Sasuke not really gaining anything new, except him finding out about his lightning affinity and possibly a single lightning jutsu, much easier than the Shidori being the lightning arc, we have to get into that last problem, finding a third member for their group. They would be sent out into the village as it is their problem, meaning they are on a last day scenario to find a partner for the tuning exams. So, whilst they are out and about, the Hokage, as per usual, would recall the Jonin senseis to find out which teams would be participating, being surprised that all the uh, new rookie teams would actually be there, or at least the three head teams being that of, of course, Kakashi, Asuma, and Kurenai. So... Obviously, Haruzen would ask if Kakashi had found a suitable member to replace Naruto as he is already a Chunin, with Kakashi saying they will take care of it. This leads us to obviously the person we might be wondering is going to take over. After hours of searching near night comes, they would have asked hundreds of other Genin to participate with them, but a lot of them either already had a team to participate with, just weren't interested in participating, weren't interested in participating with these select individuals, or weren't clear to enter. But they do inevitably run into one person. This is around the time they meet back up. And instead of directly running into them or discovering them, they would have met back up at a place to eat as Sasuke would find Sakura recently more bearable as he had, she hadn't been pestering him at all actually she barely even talked to him and in this case she would actually offer to pay for whatever dish they are eating and they would start asking each other if they had any luck which would result in someone overhearing their search i guess for a third team member which would approach them this is someone significantly older than them not someone close to the age of kakashi but still a few years older than sakura and sasuke he had a white hair and a leaf headband with glasses he would push up said glasses as he would offer to join at first they would be skeptical and ask who he is he would reveal himself to be kabuto he would also explain that he had entered the tuning exams multiple times and give us that entire spiel he did in canon he would reveal some information on some of the participants he can guarantee to be there, as well as a possible test for the first, of course, as he doesn't want to reveal too much ahead of schedule. You might be wondering why Kabuto was doing this, as originally he had his own team, but the answer is quite clear. With Naruto's absence, Orochimaru saw this as an opportunity and would have commanded Kabuto to try and join their group. And Kabuto had actually been surveying them mostly the whole day as he would have looked for an opportunity, leaving us with the entrance to the tuning exams. As the next day comes and the new team consisting of Sasuke, Sakura, and Kabuto approach the academy, they'd be surprised to find Naruto and Kakashi there. Of course, this would start with an interaction between Naruto and Kabuto as they actually know each other not only from missions they gone on together, but also the fact that they had faced off against each other in Naruto's tuning exam. Even though 
Kabuto had performed pretty well up until his encounter with Naruto, he had still not become a Chunin in any of the ones he had participated in. Along with this, the team comes to be relieved as Naruto and Kakashi are actually there to give them their entrance papers, even if only last minute, since they wouldn't actually be able to participate without the papers signed. So, by following up on this and signing the papers, the team would make their way into the academy and as per usual would walk up to the second floor where they would see two people standing in front of a room with a group of genin surrounding them. Kabuto, who's already seen this more than once, and Sasuke and Sakura, who would pretty easily be able to pick up on Genjutsu, would notice and ignore this, as they would just walk by. And, exactly as canon, Lee would actually approach Sasuke wanting a challenge. Kabuto would step in, suggesting that they postpone this until the final rounds of the tuning exams, since if both of them are separately so well oriented they will meet in the finals so lee at first would not accept this but inevitably when sasuke would step up to the challenge since he does want to test the new skills he had got because of kakashi he would still be beaten not as narrowly as he was originally but actually lasting a bit longer and almost matching lee's speed along with this having his second tomo in his sharingan helped him keep up quite a bit but inevitably he would almost be slammed into the ground only to be saved by guy sensei stopping lee having that entire interaction as they continue to the next room, Kabuto would advise them to lay low from here on going forward, as they had already displayed some of their skills to other teams. So, minding their business from here on would highly benefit them since there are combat scenarios later on. And as you might guess, the only big difference here is the amount of teams that are going to end up within the finals, since a lot of teams had actually stayed present because of Naruto's speech at the end of the first exam. Sakura would still be able to mentally power through these questions, while Sasuke would use his Sharingan to copy someone else. On the other hand, Kabuto had probably done this test before, or at least has the knowledge to fill it out, so there would be no big problem, meaning that their team, without the original Naruto in it, was actually better off for this first exam and even cut down on more shinobi, leaving a lot less people to challenge them. So we would go into the second exam where the next big change goes that we don't actually see the abundant presence of Orochimaru since obviously Naruto had not gotten a kunai thrown at him by Anko. So the explanation goes over pretty well and each team makes their way to their gate as the exams would begin. And as you might think, nothing really changes for this except the fact that the Rain Genin would probably be a much bigger threat and when Orochimaru shows up, even though Kabuto would pick up a fight, he would probably be immobilized pretty easy. Still, as per usual, this would leave Sasuke with a curse mark and a heavily injured Sakura and Kabuto. Kabuto obviously not as injured as you might think, as he could heal all the low rating injuries that he had gotten. Sasuke on the other hand is out cold, and Kabuto would pretend to be healing him, as he actually does want him to wake up, but not until the sound genin show up. On the other hand, he's able to perfectly heal both himself and Sakura, meaning that the trap set up for the sound genin would be a lot more pronounced. This would also mean that people like Lee would actually not have to interfere as when the sound genin show up, Kabuto and Sakura would give off some sort of fight and Kabuto who had healed Sasuke just enough to wake up during this moment. Meaning he would awaken his curse mark for the first time and still as brutally beating the sound genin as he originally did but this time with Naruto and Sakura not actually trying to hold him back. Obviously, he doesn't kill anyone since Kabuto would most likely stop him, but the rest of the Konoha 12 that had been present just watching on in fear as this was not necessarily expected, with obviously Hinata, Hiba, and Shino being non-present in this situation, but Shikamaru's team and the uh, guy team still watching, even if only from afar. 
So this leads us into the semifinals, as everything from here on going forward would be pretty much smooth sailing, as Naruto not being there means they most likely didn't lose their scroll, not leaving for as much opportunities for the tuning exams to be drawn out. Meaning our next major event means what the hell is going to happen without Naruto present in the semifinals. Obviously, Sasuke would not be able to get his curse mark sealed quite yet, as they would have to wait until after this test, and Kabuto would take Naruto's place. He kind of rooted himself into this team, gaining both trust from Sakura and Sasuke, meaning even a possible larger connection for him and Sasuke larger on. So in this scenario, he would actually not give up as he wants to make it seem like he does want to become a Chunin, meaning he would be faced off against Kiba and would sadly lose to Kiba. But he would make the promise that he would cheer on both Sasuke and Sakura from the sidelines. I know y'all might be thinking that, yo, Sakura is a little bit more useful and Sasuke is a lot faster, so why couldn't they get away from Orochimaru? And the 100% fact is the giant snake that originally consumed Naruto would have been more present here since Naruto would not have been there to dispel it. Moving on, we see, once again, as I said, Kabuto losing against Kiba as that is kind of the way he's going to get out. He would have made it apparent that he was trying, even though he was clearly not, not revealing things like offensive chakra scalpels, but instead trying to avoid attacks and land the occasional one. But nevertheless, this still ends in his loss, and Sakura and Sasuke's fight go near canon, except for Sakura, who would be able to pull out a win, using her maneuvers to confuse Ino, meaning she never got caught in the mind transfer, or at least not till later on, using that true plot armor to break free. But she does inevitably and wins over Ino, meaning that in this case, Sakura is actually moving on to the finals. And with Sakura and Kiba moving on to the finals, that leaves us with two new matchups for said finals. This time, Sakura would actually be facing off against Neji, and as a fellow female supporter, she would have actually had it in for Neji after what he did to Hinata, and she would have even stepped in instead of Naruto when the final moment hit. On the other hand, we also see Kiba being uh, paired up against Dosu, while on the other hand, Shino gets the bye, or he would have originally gone against Konkuro, who had forfeited in their match, meaning he still kind of gets a bye. So, let's move on to the one month time skip. Before their training period for the tuning exams finals begin, the team would collectively, I guess, grief in a sort for Kabuto not making it to the finals, since, in his own words, this is the seventh time he's attempted to become a tuning. But even though he had failed, he would still be rooting for the group from the sidelines. This would obviously have Sakura say some nice things for once, as Sasuke would be his normal brooding self. This would lead to them splitting up with Sakura and Sasuke both being really hyped for what's to come, since both of them do want to become tuning so that they can go on harder missions like Naruto used to, as he would have told them tales of some of the missions he had gone on. Along with this, they would obviously want to train and would ask their sensei Kakashi what lies in front of them. Kakashi would reveal that he wants to teach Sasuke the Chidori, the technique that he had used prior in the Land of Waves. Sasuke, being all too happy to do this, since his speed had already been upped, would obviously go along. And with this occurring, this would lead to Sasuke splitting paths from Naruto and Sakura, as Kakashi would take him to a remote area where they could train. At first, Sakura would seem down as it would look like Naruto wouldn't be able to teach her since he'd bring up that he has a mission. She would ask him if he knows of anyone else that could teach her when he says that I wasn't planning on letting anyone else teach you. So she would think that he obviously meant no one would be teaching her. Which she would then start sulking when Naruto would reveal that she would be accompanying him on the mission. It's a simple wiping out bandits and along the way there, 
he could teach her some useful things. And depending on how she does on the mission, he might even teach her some more advanced things. So, about a day's walk out of the village after prep time, Naruto and Sakura's training would be the only one we're actually going over in detail. Naruto would be asking Sakura to do certain things, like Genju to spot certain areas that he assumes are already Genjutsu, which would reveal some traps obviously set by another shinobi, and so on and so forth. And along with that, he would continuously ask her to analyze the area and situation and determine what would happen on the mission. This leaves Sakura's brilliant mind to shine as she would point out things she's noticed, like the Genjutsu traps would imply that a shinobi is present, while the bandits might have more than one shinobi, it should still be easy going since none of this seems to be too advanced. Even the Genjutsu was easily broken by a genin on her level, meaning this should be a breeze. She would obviously bring up some things like her lack of physical strength when Naruto would basically start teaching her how to enhance her body, similar to how Sasuke had learned that originally. Naruto up until this point had only been grinding her physical body and not her chakra implications on it, so this would give her a great advantage. And since this bandit camp is about an entire day out of the leaf, by the time they had gotten there she would be eager to test out her skills. This would lead the young Konoichi to make a rather rash decision and a very stupid judgment as she would lose the attempt to surprise them by leaping out of the trees and revealing her chakra signature. If she had stayed suppressed and attempted to sneak up on one of the shinobi, this would have ended a lot better. It would be revealed that both of the shinobi currently present are both Chunin level. So, Naruto would at first be forced to watch, since interfering could also cost him his life. So he would see Sakura actually attempting to fight off not only bandits, which come pretty easily, but also the Chunin present. One of them would step up to face against her and would point out that she's too lackluster experienced to be a Chunin, so he's assuming that she's a Genin. He would go on to berate the leaf as she would be able to strike him unexpectedly, doing a pretty hefty blow. Along with this, Naruto would see his opportunity using a wood style jutsu to trap the shinobi's arms in place so that he cannot cast anything to break loose. And along with this action, he would break his cover to help Sakura. She would at first throw some shade at Naruto for not helping her immediately when he revealed he was looking for an opportunity, something she should have done. He would at first scold her and, and eventually congratulate her since she did take the opportunity well to get rid of the opponent, knowing that Naruto was there to back her up. This means that they are currently in a situation where they have an advantage, having taken out one of the Chunin and having both a Genin and Chunin present. Naruto would demand that Sakura goes out to dispatch of the bandits while he takes care of this situation. And against Naruto's better judgment, he would face off against the shinobi who would prove to have a fire type elemental release and some fire type jutsu, meaning at first he would struggle. Eventually, when he would see openings, he would actually use wood style, but on any other occasion, he would be using water to directly counter. And eventually, he would see a more than promising opening, taking this to throw out his rendition of a minor great forest devastation, which is a line of trees being thrown towards your opponent, which he would obviously take the opportunity to burn in attempts to hurt Naruto, but when the shinobi lands, he would unexpectedly be drawn under the ground. Seeing this, Sakura would divert her attention, throwing a kunai in the direction of where the shinobi's head would be stopped, killing him in place. This would technically be the first time where Sakura hand-on kills a shinobi, so she would kind of be stunned for a second, to only be hit by a bandit and slashed across the arm pretty badly. This would lead Naruto to need to help her and eventually clearing the bandit camp, with a dead and captured shinobi present. Naruto, because Sakura had taken the kill, would offer her his bounty, which she would take, feeling that it is her duty as a shinobi to still do this. But nevertheless, she is rather shocked. And after all the opponents are subdued, Naruto would attempt to appeal medical ointments and so on and so forth. 
This would leave Sakura with a long-lasting scar on her arm and now the presence of bandages going along her right arm. So, from here on splitting forward, Naruto would be going into more strict tests, actually using himself over clones to punish Sakura as much as possible, giving him the ultimate result he wanted. He didn't want her to learn any jutsu, but instead of pure chakra enhancement. Something similar to what Sasuke was doing in the Land of Waves, but to a much higher degree. This would actually seem fruitful, as Sakura would appear to take this to head leaving behind or leaving the training behind with an immense strength level somewhat similar to what she had by the time Shippuden rolled around and a much higher speed than she had at that point, meaning she is currently better off than she was canonically, and thus she would leave to go to the tuning exams. On the other hand, Sasuke had actually had more time to do things since he had started his Shidori training technically early, getting a lot of the earlier steps done, leaving him to learn some more techniques like, first of all, awakening his third Tomo Sharingan, whilst simultaneously learning a lot quicker lightning moves that don't require as much prep as the Shidori and can be used before, after, or even in some sort of combo along with it. And as the training period comes to an end, this would lead us to a drastically changed tuning exam, except for a few things that I don't logically see changing. For example, the killing of Dosu by Gara, meaning that this would still be a Sakura versus Neji situation. Along with that, the pairings for Shikamaru versus Tamari and Sasuke versus Gara would still happen. As per usual, Konkuro would drop out, giving Shino a pass on this round. So, moving on, we would start off our version of the tuning exams with the Sakura vs Neji fight, which as you might guess is going to be a unique spectacle to see, as Neji is so overwhelmingly more powerful than Sakura at this point in time. This would obviously start off with Neji giving some destiny banter about how Sakura wasn't destined to be anything and so on and so forth, with Sakura constantly throwing shots back. She at first would not be using her enhanced strength and speed to the same degree, but instead using her chakra for defense against Neji, since palm strikes do per usual disrupt your chakra points, meaning if she does not time everything exactly right, she would be kind of screwed. She would also proceed to use things like normal clones, which would be insufficient, and basic shinobi stealth tactics. Along with her using stealth tactics and clones to even temporarily fool Neji, she would be able to place some traps that are seen and some that are not, as she is being pretty rapid and fast about this. Which would lead Neji to obviously avoid those he knows of, but occasionally get scarred from those that aren't. Neji would not necessarily be up for using any technique like, let's say, the palm rotation, which he wouldn't in fact need to use quite yet, as he would first attempt to completely destroy Sakura off the bat, going from the 32 palms up to the 64. And as per usual, he would impress all the Hugas in the stand, really proving that he is this generation's genius of the Hyuga. On the other hand, Sakura would be able to channel her chakra to be able to pop open her chakra points and continue the fight. This would obviously impress Neji, but not to the point where he would give her any sort of recognition, but instead continue to fight. This would lead to eventually a large majority of kunai being flung from a trap at Neji, forcing him to counter with a palm rotation, revealing his ultimate technique not only to the Hyuga, but to Sakura. Not Thinking that this is anything, she would actually rush in, and in a moment of pure luck as he fades out of the technique, she is able to land one solid hit that knocked him nearly as hard as Sakura knocked that boulder in Shippuden, meaning Neji is pretty much down for the count. Obviously, I don't think she would be able to defeat him completely with this hit, but she would immediately walk up to him. This would be an exchange of word where he says he's about to get up and he's about to destroy her and everything she stands for, but before he could even attempt to, she would give him his own speech about destiny, but in reverse, 
basically breaking his beliefs, saying that if she was destined to lose here to him, she wouldn't take that. She personally thinks that she could uh, craft her own destiny going forward. And with that, she would raise her hand, calling that she forfeits. This would be a surprise not only to Neji, the proctor, and everyone in the audience, since it clearly looked as if she had one strike left to finish him off. This would in turn cause us to go on to the next round, giving Shino the buy as Kankuro would admit he would not be fighting, and Shikamaru and Tamari's fight going near canon. But where things really do get interesting is the Garo vs Sasuke fight. Since Sasuke had more time to work on his speed and even had more area of effect jutsu he could use against Gara, I think things would go a little smoother but would obviously lead to the same situation as it originally did, with Gara going berserk, the genjutsu dropping and Sasuke chasing after him. But yeah, that's how this series is going to come to an end for now. If you guys want to see the rest of this series, it will not be continuing in the fashion it has been so far. Instead, this entire series is going to be revamped into one long form video where we go over the changes to the Naruto worldscape and what led up to the animated short that sparked all of this. But this will not be happening on this channel. Instead, this will be happening on an alternate channel known as the Fiction Forward, run by myself and my friend, a Spectrum D. If you are at all interested in watching this, pretty soon after this video, you will see an announcement video about we needing to talk. That's going to introduce the Fiction Forge to all of you. Do not worry, I will not be quitting YouTube by any means, and we will still be double weekly uploading, regardless of my newfound interest in a new channel. And instead, this new channel is going to be going over some of the high quality works I've been working on in the last few months since we came back. And if you are at all interested in high quality anime content, what ifs, or just alternate stories that happen in existing universes whatsoever, following different characters or new characters altogether, make sure to go check that out. And with that, I do hope y'all enjoyed this series and the effort I put into it so far. I do hope y'all enjoyed the little animated short made by our friend Talo at the start. But yeah, this has been a wild ride. I thank all of you for staying tuned and watching thus far. This has been your boy Six. Have a great morning, evening, afternoon, whatever. Peace. Until next time, nerds, we'll meet again In the virtual world where heroes ascend Keep the flame of adventure burning bright Until next time, nerds, let's take flight